live. We're glad that you're here with us this morning. If you're watching online, welcome to Evangel this morning. If you're here in the room, stand up with me. If you can, if you're able, we're going to get, we're going to begin this morning. We're excited that you are with us today here at church. We're excited because God is here as well. So this morning, like we do each week, we want to prepare our hearts for worship. We want to prepare what God is going to say to us, what he's going to speak into our hearts as we worship and praise his name. So not exactly sure what your morning's been like. I say this each week. But I do know in the next few moments as you come in this place, the Holy Spirit wants to do something awesome in your life, in your heart today. So are you ready? That's the question. Are you ready? So maybe right where you're standing or seated, wherever you are, you just need to take a moment and just say, God, I turn my spiritual eyes to you right now. God, I put my focus and my attention on you and you alone. God, I look to you in this place. That over these next few moments, you would speak to our hearts, speak to our life. Do something amazing in this, God, as we praise and worship your name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now let's worship the Lord this morning. With me in the rising sun, with me in the distance, the kindness of your heart, the kindness of your heart, never failing in the night, in your presence I will find the kindness of your heart. The kindness of your heart, your goodness, your goodness. Everywhere I turn, I see your mercy, your mercy, chasing after me. to drink. I have tasted, I have seen the kindness of your heart, the kindness of your heart. And even in my darkest days, God, your goodness will remain. It's just who you are. It's just who you are. Your goodness, your goodness, everywhere I turn I see your mercy, your mercy, chasing after me, your goodness, your goodness, everywhere I turn I see your mercy, your mercy, chasing after me. Ever before me, ever behind me, every day of my life, ever before me, ever behind me, every day of my life. Ever before me, ever behind me, every day of my life. Your goodness, your goodness, everywhere I turn I see your mercy, your mercy, chasing after me. Me. 
Aren't you glad that we serve a good God, a good God who has so much goodness that surrounds each and every one of us every day? I don't want to ever take that for granted. I come out of agreement with the lie that you have left me on my own. I am not alone. I come out of agreement with the worry and the fear I've come to know. You won't have a hold on me. Protected, you'll never, never, never let me go. You said you wouldn't leave me, and you won't. You're right by my side. Protected. I come into agreement with the truth that you are who you say you are. I can trust your heart. I come into agreement with what heaven has declared over my life. Cause I know that you fight for me Protector You'll never, never, never let me go You said you wouldn't leave me And you won't You're right by my side Protector you hide me in the shadow Your presence is my peace, my covering, my song in the night, protected, ooh, protected. No weapon, no worry will prosper against me. No darkness, no evil will tease or torment me. No weapon, no worry will prosper against me. No darkness, no evil will tease or torment me. All power, dominion to what name is given. My fortress, my freedom. or torment me no weapon no worry will prosper against me no darkness no evil will tease or torment me all power dominion to a name is given my fortress my freedom my refuge my Jesus all power to what name is given my fortress my freedom my refuge my Jesus protected you'll never 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 let me 
that chases after us. So this is how I 
Sing all my life. Sing it one more time. All my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Be good. Just tell them right now. You know he's been good in your life. You know he's been faithful. Just tell them all over this room right now. Use your words. You may want to lift your hands. Just tell them right now. God, you're so good. Oh, church, let's worship and how good is our God this morning. Lord, we just praise you. You are good. You are faithful. You are true. You are good, Lord. You are faithful and true in our life today. We worship you. Every breath. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing of the goodness of God this morning. You're so good. You're so good. Hallelujah. Oh, my. If you have been faithful, and all my life you have been so, so good, with every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God, oh, I will sing. Of the goodness of God. Lord, that's our prayer this morning. You are so good. You are so true. You are so faithful. Lord, even though our circumstances may say differently here, we may get our eyes and some things on our on this earth. We know this truth. That you are good. That you are faithful. You're true. You see us through. You are with us in all our all our difficulties. You're with us in every situation. You don't leave us. You don't forsake us. We can put our faith and trust in you today. God, we rejoice in that. We rejoice in that this morning. You are faithful this morning. You're so good. You're so good. So Lord, I pray for those in this room that may be facing financial, physical, relationship, difficulty, some, something. As I do each week, I've been praying for the situations that are happening. God, they're they're big, they're real, and I'm praying right now that you would just come, that your Holy Spirit would move, whether they're watching at home, whether they're in this room right now, and that your Holy Spirit would just sweep over them, and you would do what only you could do, the supernatural, Lord, the supernatural, that you would impact people's hearts and lives today. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, as we study your faithfulness, your goodness in Psalm 23 this morning, as we Start verse 6. Lord, I'm believing that you're going to speak to our hearts even more. 
And I've been praying this week for the people who are here and the people who are watching. I've been praying for them specifically that you would speak to their hearts today, that you would change their life. That as we study your scripture, that again, you would do the supernatural and move mightily today. So God, one more time, we just say, you are good, you are faithful, you are true, and we worship you and you alone in this place. God, we love you. We love you and we praise you today. In the name of Jesus, we pray all these things. Amen. Amen, amen. He is good, church. He is good this morning. You can be seated. Welcome to Evangel this morning. We are glad that you're with us today. So glad you're, you're worshiping with us here in person or online if you're watching at home we're glad that you're here with us today. Welcome. God is good. He is amazing. And it's going to be a good day in his house today. Just a few things that I want to let you know about before we get moving too much further. If you are a guest with us in this room or if you're a guest online watching, welcome. If you're here in the room, about six feet in front of you, you'll see some cards on the chair in the seat pocket in front of you. I know it's a long reach, but if you wouldn't mind, if you could take one of those cards, fill it out, it says connect on it. Stop by the um, info center on your way out, and we have a gift we'd like to give you our way of saying thank, or we like to say thank you for being with us this morning. Um, we're glad that you're here. If you're online, go to evangelwichita.org slash connect, and you can fill out the card there as well, but we are pumped that you are here. Second of all, thank you for continuing to walk in faithfulness in your giving, in obedience in your giving. We are just pumped that you're doing that. Many of you are giving online. You found our app. You can it's a Secure Give Vision app. You can give very easily there. We have a kiosk in the lobby. You can continue to worship God through giving, tithes, offerings, all that stuff. Thank you for walking in obedience and even generosity. If you're here in this room, we don't pass offering plates or anything anymore. We have giving stations on your way out. Um, you'll see the tables at the doorway. You can find those there. They're offering envelopes in the seat pocket in front of you if you'd like to take advantage of that as well. I got to walk through all my announcements as we get going. Let me let you know, the, for the Wednesday nights in August, we are having prayer at 7 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. If you'd like to come join us for prayer from 7 to 8, you can come at any point during that time. If you just come and find a place of prayer, we're opening the sanctuary up on Wednesday nights from 7 to 8 in the month of August. So please, if you can, make yourself aware of that on Wednesday nights. Also, Malachi is still happening, and it's been going on for a while. If you'd like to join that, I'm sure they would love to have you still, but um, you can be involved in that. Finally, on August 30th, Sunday night, August 30th, I'm sorry, I keep popping everywhere. August 30th, Sunday night, 5 o'clock, we are going to have a church picnic. I don't know if that's rubbing on me or what, but I'm sorry. Anyway, church picnic, 5 o'clock. But not only that, we are going to doing, be doing water baptisms that Sunday night at 5 o'clock. So if you've never followed the Lord in water baptism and you like to be baptized in water, you can stop by the kiosk on your way out or the iPads and you can sign up for that. But we are going to have fun that night. Um, we're going to have some volleyball, I think wiffle ball, some cornhole, different things like that. We're asking every family to bring food for your family. Okay, so we won't be providing any meals or anything. So if you want to eat at the picnic, it's your responsibility to bring food. Okay, everybody got that. You need to bring food with you, but Sunday night, 5 o'clock, August 30th. That's next week. Next, next Sunday, 5 o'clock out here on the west side, or excuse me, east side of the building. I am all messed up. East side of the building outside, 5 o'clock, water baptism and picnic. So make yourself aware of that. Finally. Uh, or one, one last one before I get to the, the reach one. But uh, this past week, many, some of you may know and remember Bill Hammonds, a uh, longtime member of Evangel. Uh, he passed away this just past week, went to be with the Lord. And his um, memorial service is this Wednesday here at 1 o'clock in the sanctuary. If you'd like to come and be a part of that, it's this Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Many of you may remember. I remember Bill Hammonds um, as a kid growing up. I remember him quite well. So many of you, if you've been around Evangel for some time, um, you would remember his name, but he, his service will be Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Very exciting announcement, the la very last one I want before we get into Psalm 23. We are working this program called Roots, and we started talking about it with you a little bit last week, but I want to give you this stat. The Center for Bible Engagement, the Center for Bible Engagement said this. They found that if you engage with Scripture, 
four or more times a week. You engage with Scripture somehow four or more times in a week. It is the most impactful spiritual discipline as it relates to growing in your faith. By engaging with Scripture four times, at least four times in a week. So we've built this program called Roots around Scripture, around engaging with Scripture. And what we've done even now as we're moving forward into this year and beginning it in the fall is we're expanding it to impact not just the one person, but to impact the entire family at the same time. So if you have kids, if you have children, if you have students, that they can be on the same track as you are engaging with Scripture. Before I finish my announcement, I want to bring up Matthew Dunham, who was a member of last year's class, which was amazing, amazing class. And he want, we just want him to share just a few moments what it meant to him over this over last year. Thank you. Uh, last year, uh, I was reticent about joining the group. Uh, my wife is the one that uh, stirred me up to gum with her. And I'm telling you, it was life-changing to engage in the scriptures in an in-depth way with other brothers and sisters in Christ. And uh, we, we ranged from in, in the age of, in the 20s to senior saints. It was an awesome time to just join together and create bonds. And it, it literally stirred me up. Oh, the word of God again. I've been walking with Christ since 1975, but I needed it. And God has so stirred me up. God's on the move. Church, God is on the move. We need to stand up. We need to rise up and say, we want to be counted. And I just want to specifically call the men of this church. You are leaders in the home. You are leaders in your businesses. You are leaders in your jobs. But it's time to rise up and say, you know what? I want to be counted. I want to be a leader in this church. You know, the Lord says in the scriptures that we are the ministers. It's not Mark. It's not Crystal. It's not. It's we are the church. We are the ministers. In Ephesians 4, it says they are there to equip us to do the work of the ministry. So I'm telling you, this is an opportunity. This is a time to step up. It's not easy. It takes commitment, but it's doable. We are uh, examples of it. And I want to say finally that um, it so stirred me up this year, this summer. I have stirred up to the love of the scriptures again. And I am now, I me memorized the first chapter of Peter. I'm on the second chapter now. I'm saying, God, I want more of you. And it's in his word. And then finally, you know, it was called Men and Women of Valor. And I looked up that uh, definition of valor, and it says, Great courage in the face of great danger, especially in battle. Are we in not in a battle today? We are in a spiritual battle, and it's time for us to rise up and call ourselves His own. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. So today, following the service, there's an informational meeting about Roots starting in a few weeks, starting in September. Um, so you can make your way to our youth room out the doors to the left in the youth room. Just a brief informational meeting about what it is, what it means. But I would encourage all of you that can to go check it out. Uh, I want you to know that Roots is not a program. It's not a class. It's a tool that we are creating and moving toward for the family to engage in the Word of God daily. We are trying, and our goal here at the church is, like what Matthew said just a moment ago, is to equip you and to help you. That you will move, and it's, it's amazing that you're going to move through chronologically through the Bible, and you're going to go one by one through the books. And what's amazing about it is you're going to experience the Bible this way, and you're going to connect with other people who are doing the exact same thing. 
So I want to encourage you to go check it out. If you go to the informational meeting, it's not going to mean you're signed up for something. There's no hit. I'm telling you, you can go find out more information. If you have questions, you can talk to Crystal here as they develop it. But we are excited and pumped and can't wait to see what God's going to do as we continue to move forward in this. And we're excited about Roots as it comes in just a few weeks. I believe it's starting the 13th or something of September. So we're excited about that. So check it out after church today in the youth room. You can find out more about Roots. All right, Psalm 23. If you want to turn in your Bibles, we're going to be in Psalm 23. We are continuing our study here, and we are on verse 6, which is amazing. The last verse, we're going to start that today. So we are, we are trucking through Psalm 23. And I don't know about you, but as I've studied and moved through these verses, these very familiar words of King David... Many of you know these words. Many of you have studied these words. You've, you've memorized these words. But as we've moved through Psalm 23, it's, it's come alive from even more. It's changed as we've been studying these things and talking about these different stressors that we have and these issues that we face and seeing David talk about each of these in Psalm 23. It's been an amazing time for me because I want to, in my personal relationship with Jesus, to continue moving forward. I want to move forward. I want to keep growing. I know that we're not there. It's not complete yet because he hasn't returned. So I know we're not there. So I want to keep moving forward in my relationship with him. And I, my hope and my prayer as we've been studying Psalm 23 over these last several weeks is this, is that you would get a clearer picture and understanding of who God really is. Because when you see him, you'll see how much he loves you, how much he cares right about you, how much he is just invested in you, and how much he wants to do in your life even today. No matter what you came in with, no matter what you're carrying, he loves you. He cares about you. And I want you to understand God more. I want you to see his face more because I, I believe that when you do that, you're going to trust him more. It's going to be easier to trust him. And then when you trust him more, you give your life to him more, you're going to move into these places of infinitely, of infinitely more with him. And here's how we've talked and how we've navigated Psalm 23 over these last several weeks is I don't know about you, but I face different types of stress and stressors each day. It seems like in our world and our culture today and all the things that are happening around us, it's like all these stressors are just magnified and all these things are bigger and they change. And it's like I'm impacted more and more every single day. And so with these things that happen in each of our lives, I wanted to look at Psalm 23 and say, these things are real. David talked about them. He talked about them with God. And here are some antidotes, some ways that we can move forward when we're dealing with these stressors in our lives. So just out of review, here's what we talked about so, so far. As you look through Psalm 23, verses 1 through 5, as you're looking at your Bible, you see our first stress we talked about was worry. We looked at verse 1. The Lord is my shepherd. It's the key, and I said this every week, he has to be your Lord first before he can be your shepherd. Many of you are asking, as we've tracked through these things in our study, you said, man, I could deal with that. I, I need that. I need that from the shepherd, but you haven't made him your Lord. He has to be the Lord first, then he can be your shepherd. And I said, when he's your Lord, and when he begins to be your shepherd, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. The question is, what do I have to worry about when the Lord is my shepherd? Then we looked at busyness, that verse 2, you keep going in Psalm 23, that often we can get moving and moving and going forward and doing things, and it's crazy. Our pace of life is just nuts, and we move and move, and we don't know how to set the pace. We don't know what to do. We need a shepherd who can set the pace in our life, a balanced way. We looked next, as you move forward in Psalm 23, we talked about the solution that happens for damaged emotions, that many of us, especially over the last several months, emotions that have been kept down deep, that we pushed down further than we even knew and have for, tried to forget about, have popped back up because we've been in isolation or we've been away from people and they just came up. So we talked about the solution for damaged emotion, that God, the shepherd, wants to come and make changes in your life. He wants to help you with the guilt, with the grief, and with the grudges. We talked about we need, a, we need a guide in our life that we need to stay on the path. We need someone to lead us on the path. That sometimes we get this indecision and we don't know which way to go. We need someone to show us. And that could be a stress when we don't know which way to go. We need to let the shepherd be our guide. The shepherd needs to push us forward. We talked about dark valleys. Dark valleys, as you read through Psalm 23, so we've talked about the dark valleys. They happen. We can't avoid them. They come. And they happen, but we have the protection, guidance, and love of the shepherd 
even in the dark valleys. We talked about how to handle the hurts that come in life, especially the hurts that come from relationships. We talked about how the shepherd will come and heal our hurts. Heal our hurts. Now we're ready for verse 6. Let's look at Psalm 23 again. If you have your Bible, Psalm 23, it'll be on the screen as well. Psalm 23 says this, The Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. We talked about that last week. Surely, verse 6, surely your goodness and love, some says mercy, right, will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So let's look today at a final source of stress. And here it is. This is something that we deal with almost every day. And it seems that in today's world, it seems more applicable than it ever has been before. It's the stress that comes from the future. What happens when we fear the future? What happens when we constantly wonder and worry about tomorrow? What do we do? Is there something that God wants to do in our life to help us with this fear that we sometimes have of tomorrow? If you look around at, at, at social media, if you look around at, at any other type of media, really, you will see that a lot of people spend their lives worrying about tomorrow. It's very hard for people to enjoy today or this moment because they are constantly wondering and, and, and worried about what's going to happen tomorrow. What's going to happen tomorrow? So look back at verse 6. And let me, let me just, look, this is an amazing way that how David concludes this Psalm 23. Verse 6, surely your goodness and love or surely your goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I talked about this. That If you look at verse 1 and verse 6, it's these perfect bookends to the entire psalm. And here's what I want you to look at. If you look at verse 6 right here, as they leave that up there for a moment. Look at verse 6. If you're reading through verse 6 and you're thinking about David writing this verse, King David, how would you describe David's thoughts in this verse? As he's writing verse Six. What is what 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 are his thoughts? Just think to yourself. Well, if you're reading how he's writing this, surely your goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now it doesn't seem to me, it doesn't seem to me that he is dealing with anxiety at this moment. It doesn't seem to me that David, in this moment, reading verse 6, it doesn't seem to me that he is worried about the future in that moment, right? It seems that as he finishes verse 6, as he concludes Psalm 23, it seems that David is very confident about the future. That's how I look at that verse. So here's the next question. If that's true about David in Psalm 23, 6, if that's really where he is as he's finishing verse 6, here's the question I have. Maybe you have the same question. Where do I get that kind of confidence? Mark, how can I have that kind of confidence about the future? How can I walk in confidence regarding the future today? I mean, Mark, have you looked around outside at what's going on in the world today? I mean, it is wild out there. And it's like changing every day. Just when you think you figured it out, it changes again, right? How can I have that kind of confidence, verse 6 kind of confidence today? Here's what I would say. If you go back to verse 1, and here's the key. If he is your Lord, if Jesus is your Lord today, there are three reasons that we're going to talk about why you don't need to fear the future, why you can have this confidence. Now, he has to be your Lord, so I'm going to make that clear. If you're sitting in this room, if you're watching online and he's not your Lord, these may not make sense, or you'll try these and they're not going to work. But if he is your Lord, these are the things that you can hold on to in relation to the, all the craziness that's going on about the future. 
Here's why I can have the confidence. Here's the three things I'll tell you right now. Number one, because God is watching over me. Number two, because God's grace is working in me. And number three, because heaven is waiting for me. These are three things why you can have confidence today. So today we're going to talk about the first two. I'm going to save that last one for next week. So next week we're going to hit that number, talk about number three, because in my mind that's the greatest one of all as we're talking about the future, that we have an incredible future. And we're going to talk more about that next week. But let's look at these first two today. And I want to show you how these first two items on this list should impact your view, my view of the future today, how I can have confidence in the shepherd today. Now, number one, let's talk about these. Because God is watching over me. If you look at verse six again, it says, surely your, look at this, surely your goodness and love or goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. I mean, these are great words. Because God is good, and we just sang about this, right? We just talked about this a moment ago. We sang these words to the Lord, and we spent time telling him he's good. Because God is good, there are things that I can expect because he's my Lord and my shepherd, all right? I can expect his protection and provision in my life. I can expect that no matter what happens to me, God will bring good out of it somehow. I can expect that he will bring good out of it. But Mark, come on, man, this is some crazy stuff. You know what's happening to me? How in the world? No, 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 I can expect that God will bring good out of it somehow. It will either be for my own good, it will either be, it may be for the good of other people, or it may be the good for his kingdom, period. Why? Because God is a good God. He is a good God, period. He is. Look what the psalmist says in in Psalm 145, verse 20. It says this. The Lord watches over all who love him. He watches over all who love him. Here's what it tells me. This is exciting. This is showing me that God cares about the details of my life. That God cares about my future. God cares about my future. Now, if you're sitting here and you have kids, you can relate to this question. I mean, if you've seen kids, you can relate to this as well, but here's the perspective I'm going to give you. I have conversations with my two kids about their future quite often. As they're growing older, we talk more about their future. Just this past week, I took my daughter back to college to begin her second year in college. So she's even thinking about her future even more. Like, what are you going to do after college? What's going to happen? My son is beginning his junior year in high school. So he's thinking about what is in the future. How many college credit courses can I take in high school to get me ready for the future? What are the things that I even want to do in the future? So I talk to them often about what what they're interested in as their father, right? As their father, I care about the things that they're interested in. I talk about these things that they're interested in. As they're dreaming about their future as their father, I want to talk to them. I want to be invested in and talk to them and see what they like. I care about what they care about. Does that make sense? I mean, if you had the same experience with kids or grandkids, or you could be a spouse, it could be anyway. You care about what they care about. And I will do anything I can and everything I can as their father to provide for them in the future. Like, I, as their father here on earth, I want to provide for them in the future. What experiences can I let them have? What, what, what? direction can I help them? What insight can I give them as their father to help them in the future? And sometimes you have those hard conversations. You know, you're not going to get this now, but I'm having this conversation with you today because you're going to get it in the future. You understand, you know, those are the hard ones when they're pushing back against what you're doing. But here's something you need to remember. Here's as much as I care about the future for my kids, God cares about you even more. You may be sitting in this room and you would say, Mark, I did not have a good earthly father example. So that example really breaks down for me. And it's hard. But I want you to know that God cares about the details in your life. He cares so much about your details. And he wants to provide for you in the future. Because the reality is that I found, maybe you can relate to this, is it can often be frustrating 
to not know what the future holds in our life. When I don't know, there's kind of a frustration there. Sorry. If it's distracting me, it's probably distracting you. Here, let's just go to this one. Check, check. All right. Yeah, so, for me, it can be frustrating to not know what the future holds. And I've been there. I can remember a day when I was on a certain track and I finished school, finished college with a degree. I have a degree in marketing, if you didn't know, and a, my, and a degree in accounting and management. Yes. That's what I did. Can you see me as an accountant? I'm not sure you'd bring your, see my wife is shaking her head, no. <laughs> She's like, I would not bring my stuff to you. <laughs> so I have this degree in marketing, in accounting and management. Graduated college, I mean, summa cum laude, I was 4.0. Well, that part's not true, but that's how I remember it. <laughs> Ready to go in the future, but then you have those questions, right? You start thinking, what are you going to do now? You finish with your degree, now you have to start finding about where you're going to go. You have to start interviewing for jobs, and you try to decide which direction you're going to go. And I started going on interviews and going on, on, on job, and, and I was interviewing for all these jobs, and I hated every single one of them. And it was frustrating because I didn't know what I wanted to do, and I had to move back to my parents' basement, and that's the worst thing ever. <laughs> hey, thank you. <laughs> I thought that would be my mom. But, but it's frustrating. But here's what I came to realize, and it took me a while to figure this out, that there is a shepherd, there is my Lord that has a bigger view of my life, that cares about every detail, cares about everything that I'm going through. He is watching over what I'm doing. He cares about what happens to me. He wants the best for me, and I need to put my faith and my trust in him because when I do, I can take comfort in knowing the one that holds my future. That's the capital O one, right? So here's the thing I want you to get to. God is totally in control. God completely loves you. God wants to help you today. He is telling you, Psalm 23, verse 6, that he is watching over you today. And you need to remember that there is this truth that when we're dealing with the future, we're dealing with the uncertainty that comes with the unknown, that we have a Lord and a shepherd that is watching over us every single day, no matter what we're facing. But here's the verse, right? The question comes, well, Mark, that verse says, surely goodness will follow. What does that mean? Surely goodness will follow. Does that mean, did David say that he would never have any bad days? Did David say he would never have any disappointments in life? Now, if you've read the story of David, you know that's not true, dude, is it? Of course David had bad days. Of course David had disappointments. We read about them in Scripture. We read more about David in Scripture than anybody else. We see his ups, we see his, his downs. Bad things happened in his life. But here's what he's saying in verse 6. He's saying, only goodness will follow. Good things, in other words, good things will always come out of whatever happens. Even the evil, even the difficult, God will ensure that in the end, good will come out. Good will come out of whatever happens in my life because God is watching over me because God cares about me. It may be difficult, and I don't think I agree all the time when I'm down here. I'm like, God, I could probably do it better, which is wrong, but I think I could do it better. But I know and I trust that God is watching over me, and goodness will follow. Goodness will follow. Paul talks about this in Romans 8, 28, amazing promise that God has given to believers. He says this, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. It's an amazing promise for those who have chosen to follow the shepherd. When the Lord is your shepherd, he's your Lord and your shepherd, this is our promise. All things are working together for good. Not saying that all things are good all the time for us, but working together for good. I'm, I'm, I'm standing, I say, you know what, there is no difficulty that I will face as a believer that God will ultimately bring to good. I may face difficulty, but God will bring good out of it. Because God is watching over me. But it's hard, if you're honest, it's hard when you're in the middle of a tragedy, you cannot often see God's goodness. 
When you're in the valley, we talked about this a couple weeks, when you're in the valley, it's hard. When you're dealing with hurts that come from a relationship that you're close to, it's hard. It's hard to see the goodness. And you get to this point where you don't feel like God is good and, and your emotions will speak against the truth that you know. And when you're going through tragedy, it's often hard. You don't feel like God is good. You don't feel his mercy. Sometimes you feel like the goodness is hidden. And it's only later that we've all been through situations. And you can look back. You can look back on those situations and those times you've gone through and those times when you felt that way and you look back and go, it's so clear. I can see his goodness, his mercy that was always with me when I was tracking through those difficult days. Once you get through it, you can look back and you can see that he's always working for good. I mean, we read Paul's writing in Romans and here's Paul, this apostle who was accused of a crime and falsely put into prison in Rome. And I would think that if I took a, a poll of all of us here in this room, we would all agree that that's not good. It's falsely accused, put into prison in Rome. That's not good. But while he was there, do you know what happened? While Paul was in prison, he writes letters to different churches that we now call the New Testament in our Bible. So good came out of a situation that, that, that Paul, was, he found himself in. What am I saying? Goodness followed his imprisonment. Goodness followed his imprisonment. And today we're all benefiting from Paul's problems, aren't we? <laughs> we're all benefiting from that today. But how does God do this? Look, Psalm 91, verse 9. I think I have that up there too, right? Psalm 91, verse 9. If you say, the Lord is my refuge, and you make the most high your dwelling, no harm will overtake you, no disaster will come near your tent, for he will watch us, he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now notice it's plural, angels. There's a lot of them, not just one, okay? So he'll command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. There's a way that God watches over us, and he uses his angels. One of the reasons God created angels, not the only reason, but one of the reasons is to watch and protect believer. Watch over us, protect. We don't see them, but they're working on our behalf. How do they do this? Let me just quickly, I'm not going to get too far into this, but first, they will guard, we, we see these examples through Scripture. So we see angels guard us against harm and injury. If you look at the story of Daniel in the Old Testament, he was thrown into the lion's den. What happens? The lions were hungry. They were ready to eat, but God sent his angels to protect Daniel, to close the mouths of the lions, and he was protected all night. The same is for you today. Hopefully you don't get thrown into a lion's den today, but other than that, they're here to protect you. Second, we see angels will protect you by restraining evil. If you look in 2 Kings, there's a story of the prophet Elijah and his servant who are surrounded by a hostile army. The servant is terrified because he's looking around, seeing the army that's surrounding them, and they are outnumbered. But Elijah sees something different, doesn't he? If you know the story, he sees something different. He knows the truth. He asks God to open the eyes of the servant. And when the servant's eyes are open to the spiritual world, he sees the angels surrounding them and protecting them from the enemies that are there. He was no longer worried. Third, angels can guard us in dangerous circumstances. In Acts, we see Paul traveling on a ship. A lot of other people, they run into a terrible storm. It looks like the ship's going to sink. But an angel comes and says, everyone's going to be safe. Talks to Paul. Angels can guard us against despair and discouragement. You can see numerous examples in the Bible where angels did specific things to bring encouragement to people. Now listen, God is watching over us. This is some of the ways that he uses, the things that he uses to watch over us and to protect us and to keep us. Now, it does not mean that we will not face difficult times. It doesn't mean bad things aren't going to happen in our lives. It just means what we're talking about here, number one, God is watching over me so I know that God will always be with me through adversity. And not only that, God will bring good out of whatever evil is happening in my life. So here's the thing. Number one, I want you to know, I, I want you to get this. Verse six is so important. If you're facing uncertainty from dealing about this worry about the future and tomorrow, I want you to know, number one, God is watching over you. God cares about your future. He cares about what you're going through today. Number two, 
I want you to remember not only God working, watching over you, but God's grace is working in you. This is really, really good. This is really, really good. Look at verse 6 again. Surely your goodness, and now watch this, surely your goodness and your, your love or your mercy will follow me all the days of my life. So here's what I want you to do. Not only will there be goodness that follows us, but God's love and mercy follows us too. This is very good news when we're talking about the future, that God's love and mercy will follow us as well. Isaiah 60, 10. Foreigners will come to rebuild your towns and their kings will serve you. For though I have destroyed you in my anger, this last message, watch this. I will now have mercy on you through my grace. So here's the question. What is grace? What is grace? It's all God's able to do for us because of Christ. Grace is the fact that God gives you what you need and not what you deserve today. Aren't you glad that God doesn't give you what you deserve? <laughs> I am happy that God does not give me what I deserve. So there's grace. What is mercy? Mercy is grace in action. Why do we need mercy? Because you can look around, don't look at your spouse or anything, but we're imperfect, all right? We're, if you look at, we're imperfect people. We need mercy. We stumble, we fall, we blow it, we make mistakes. Here's the reality. In the future, we're going to mess up. Things are going to happen. So in the future, you not only need God's goodness, you need his mercy. You see, you need God's forgiveness, his pardon, his healing. I love these words the psalmist writes in Psalm 103. It's a longer passage, but I want to read this to you. I, lo I love these words. Psalm 103, verse 1. Let all that I am praise the Lord with my whole heart. I will praise his holy name. Let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. He forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful. This is, this, he's merciful and slow to get angry, filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us nor remain angry forever. He does not punish us for all our sins. He does not deal harshly with us as we deserve. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. When you understand this idea of grace and mercy, when you get to this place, you will see that God is not only being good to you, he's not only being good to you today, but he's being merciful to you in handling your mistakes, your sins, your faults, and you don't have reason to fear the future. He's given you mercy. And no matter what, Something awesome to remember that we read in verse 6 is this. Mercy, like goodness, follows us in life. It follows us around. I can remember, and I tell my kids this all the time, you are walking sermon illustrations. And it's so sorry because that's what I use all the time. But I can remember when my kids were little. And I don't know if you remember this as a parent, but when your kids are little, it feels like you are constantly walking behind them because you're picking up something that they've done all the time. No matter where they go, they leave disaster in their wake, and you are constantly walking behind them, picking up after them, cleaning up after them, watching what they're going to knock over, you know, slapping their hand away from touching something. Whatever it is, you're constantly walking behind. And maybe your kids are perfect, but, but constantly walking behind. Now, maybe some of your students, have to, you have to do that with your teenagers too. I don't know. But you are constantly walking behind them, and it's tiring. They make a huge mess. But here's the good news, and here's where I'm going to relate it to us today, what we're talking about. God is constantly picking up your messes. Every time you make a mistake, every time you mess up, just remember that God's behind you. He's picking things up behind you. He's putting it back together. He's working it all out. If he's your Lord and your Savior, see, that's mercy. He's cleaning up your mess if you allow him into your life. Love and mercy will follow all the days of my life. It's great news to, for me to remember that love, goodness, mercy will follow me. All, not just some of the days of my life, but every day in my life. This idea of the future is tough. 
And one of the reasons that we fear the future, because we don't know what's going to happen, right? That's the biggest thing, the unknown. But there's one thing you can be certain about in your future. If he is your Lord, you will never face a day without God's goodness and love and mercy. You will never face a day if he's your Lord. Now, remember, he has to be your Lord. If he's your Lord, then you will never face a day without his goodness and love and mercy with you, with you. Some of the days you won't feel it. You go, I don't feel like it, Mark. I don't feel it today. Some of the days you'll say, I don't see it, Mark. I don't see that. Some days you'll go, it's hard to determine where that love, grace, where that all is, Mark. But without a doubt, you can believe and believe in your heart, believe in your head right now, if he's your Lord, that goodness and mercy are going to be there, even though there's tough times in the future. And you're like, I know some of you, there's like one person, maybe you're watching online or you're here in the, in the room. You still are like, Mark, how can you be sure? How? And you're wrestling with it. How can you be sure about what you're saying? How can you be sure? I would say because God does not lie. <laughs> he cannot lie. Look at Paul writes in Titus 1-2. He writes this, these words, in, in the hope of eternal life, which God, who does not lie, promised before the beginning of time. If God says in verse 6 of Psalm 23 that surely goodness and love, or surely goodness and love and mercy will be with you all the days of your life, they will. They will. You can take comfort and get relief in that truth today. Goodness is the fact that God gives us good things in life that we don't deserve. Mercy is the, that God holds back the condemnation that we do deserve. And you need them both. You need them both in life today. If you look at our example, remember we're talking about David writing Psalm 23. And he's writing this as king, but he's remembering back to the days and using examples of his life as a shepherd. He was a shepherd boy. That's what he did. He would tend the sheep. So all these examples and these illustrations that he's using in Psalm 23 reflect back to his days as a shepherd. And he knew that as a shepherd, you lead the sheep. It's very important to know that if, if, you are, if, you're, if you're working with cattle, you drive the cattle, you push them. But if with sheep, you're leading the sheep. So you lead the sheep from the front. You would drive the cattle from the back. And today, you would see shepherds leading the sheep in the front, maybe having a few sheepdogs or something bringing up the rear, making sure that the sheep are still the line as they're following the shepherd. So we have these divine sheepdogs in life called goodness and mercy that are following behind, keeping us in line, keeping us safe so we don't get lost, guiding goodness and mercy, keeping us in the flock. And when you have goodness and mercy, when you have goodness, love, and mercy from the shepherd, there is no fear of the future. There is no fear because goodness, love, and mercy ought to be enough to lead us into the future. Goodness, love, mercy from the shepherd lead us into the future. You see, I don't have to fear the future. I don't have to worry about the future because God is watching over me and because God's grace is working in me. I don't have to fear these things. I don't have to worry about tomorrow. And next week, we're going to finish these and we're going to look at the final promise that we see in Psalm 23, verse 6, that there's an ultimate future that we have in heaven. That when the Lord is our shepherd, we're going to dwell with him forever. And that's amazing. But as we pause today, before we get to that one, I just ask you, if you're as you're sitting here, processing Psalm 23, verse 6, processing the future, maybe you're watching at home, wherever you are. When you face the future, what do you see? 
When you look at the future, do you have eyes of doubt? Cynicism? When you look at the future, do you have eyes expecting the worst? I mean, I, most people would say, I, we don't blame you. I don't blame you. And I've come to this place where I have to realize and I, that, that I have two choices when I'm facing the future. I can face the future as a cynic, as a doubter, as someone with negative thoughts, as someone who expects the worst and everything. Or I can face the future expecting and knowing that God is with me, that his goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. And I want to say, it's amazing how life changes, how life changes, how life gets better when you start to actively look for God's goodness and God's mercy in every experience in life. When I am actively looking for God's goodness and mercy, things change. Perspective changes about the future. I mean, I get all the answers about what's going to happen tomorrow. But I get the bigger answer, which says, the shepherd is with me. The shepherd is with me. Why? Because he's my Lord. He's watching over me. Would you pray with me this morning? God, thank you for the reality that you are watching over us, that you are with us in everything, that your grace is working in us. I pray that we would begin to look at the future through the eyes of our Lord and Shepherd. That we would see the future with you. While your heads are bowed, eyes closed, I just want to conclude the service this way. Whether you're watching online or you're here in this room, let me ask you this question. Are you walking in the goodness, love, and mercy of the Shepherd today? are you? Do these things that I just mentioned, the love, goodness, and mercy of the shepherd, do they frame your view, your view of the future? How do you see the future today? When you think about tomorrow, do you look at it with worry and doubt, or do you look at it knowing that God is watching over you and knowing that God's grace is working in you? How do you see the future today? Whether you're watching online or you're here in this room, ask yourself that question. How am I looking at the future? Why you think about that answer? Let me ask you this. Is Jesus your Lord? That's the first thing. He has to be your Lord. If we want to move forward knowing that His goodness, love, and mercy follows you, He needs to be your Lord talked about the grace and we talked about the mercy. You see, we uh, we are sinners and we broke our relationship with God and we deserve death, but in his love, he sent Jesus for us that would be a sacrifice that we can have a new relationship with God. That when we come to Jesus, he will forgive our sins and we can have a new relationship with God. And he is our Lord. And maybe you need to make that commitment to Jesus today never made that commitment to him. He needs to be your Lord. So where you're sitting right now, where you're watching, you would just say, Jesus, be my Lord today. I commit my life to you. I give you my heart and my life. Be my Lord. Be my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Now for everyone that, while your heads are bowed, eyes closed, if he's your Lord, do you need to commit your future to him? You could be 60, you could be 16. It doesn't matter how old you are. Do you need to commit your future to the shepherd today? Do you need to turn your eyes on the shepherd today? Have the, the issues in the world and the culture around us taking your eyes off of your Lord and your shepherd? This is your moment. Say, God, I need to put my eyes 
back on the shepherd. I need to commit my future to the shepherd today. Just right where you're seated, right where you're watching, you need to commit your life back to the shepherd. It's just my future, back to the shepherd. Just do that right now, right where you're seated, to say, God, I give you my future. I trust you with my future today. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. I'm not going to stress over it. I'm going to trust you with my future. I'm going to trust you with my future. My God, you are good. You are faithful. We sing of your goodness and your faithfulness every day. Thank you, Lord. If you're able, would you stand with me as we close this service? God is good. He is watching over you today. He is faithful. His love, mercy, and goodness are following you all the days of your life. Now, next week, we're going to finish the best part of verse 6. The best part. Not only is verse 1 the best part, where the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. The last part is I'm going to dwell in the house of the Lord forever. What an amazing promise that we have to look forward to in the future, that we can dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So don't miss next week as we finish that up, as we wrap up the series on Psalm 23. I'm going to close in prayer. And I want to invite you to stop by our, the youth room, check out the Roots program. You don't want to miss that. Just go find out more about it. I promise you, engagement in the Bible will be well worth it. Heavenly Father, thank you for these moments we have today. Go with us and keep us in all things, Lord. We love you and give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Have an amazing day.